Ushma Nap from Kent brings an item steeped in childhood memories. Oh, look. There you go. Yeah. Look. Amazing. Beautiful. Oh. Ushma's hoping that caning expert Rachel South can use her traditional skills to breathe new life into the vintage rocker. So this is a lovely little chair. Tell me about it. Where did you get it from? My dad made it for me oh. when I was very young. He fell ill when I was around six years old. He had problems with his heart and he had a stroke. Uh, so he couldn't work anymore. Still managed to live life to the full as much as he could. He used to go to a rehab centre as part of recovery from heart surgery mm. and he used to make a lot of furniture and this was one of two chairs he made for me and over the years it's just got damaged and it's been sitting in my loft for about 10 years and I decided that it was time to do something about it and try and get it fixed so I'm hoping you can do that for me. Yeah. It's amazing, it re it's a Thank bit you. of a work of art really. Thank you. Yeah. Before your dad fell ill, was he working as a furniture maker or...? He was a cobbler, so oh, he had his okay. own shop in Harrow. So he was always very nimble and agile with his hands. Yeah. So I would imagine that's why he was drawn to, to things like this. I think just because there's some quite complicated things going on here, like the sort of way the rattan's bent yep. and this sort of lapping and just sort of making these shapes. Yeah. It's quite a sort of complicated thing to do. He must have been a really skillful man. Yeah. He wasn't one to shy away from complicated projects. Yeah. So he probably looked at this and he thought, yes. I bet you must have felt quite special having your own chair Definitely. that your dad had made Definitely. For you. It's a nice reminder um, of him it's quite special, really, yes, isn't it? Yes, is, it is a very special mm. little chair. <laughs> so what would you like me to do? How would you like to see this restored? I'd certainly like to be able to sit on it again. And at okay. the moment, I don't feel too safe oh, sitting yes. on it because the wood underneath yeah, is, is split. Yeah, there's a broken bracket there. And there's a bit here that's very loose. That's broken yeah. there. I yeah. think if anybody did try and sit on it, they might potentially fall through it and this beading around here is is all snapped so I'm not sure that's quite uh, it's quite sharp there as well because it's a handmade chair I'm in the mind that I'm gonna follow your dad's lead really, okay and I'm gonna try and think how your dad would think and I'm gonna fix it in the same way brilliant thank you very much for taking it on and good luck <laughs> thank you <laughs> thanks very thank much you. bye bye see you I was very surprised when Rachel talked about the workmanship. Um, I hadn't quite appreciated how much effort had gone into making the chair and how complicated it was. It has great sentimental value for me. This cane seat is not actually individual strands woven from hole to hole. Ushma's dad has actually used a pre-woven sheet of cane that's been stretched around the frame. So I think that to stay true to Ushma's dad and all of the time and effort that he put into making this chair, I'm gonna replace this seat with the sheet cane that he originally used. This needs to be soaked in hot water because the cane, it's the bark of the rattan palm. At the moment, it's quite stiff, but it will become really elastic. And then as it dries, everything tightens up again. So um, I'm going to take this over to the sink and I'm going to leave it to soak in hot water for about an hour. With the cane soaking, Rachel can use the time to remove the perished beading to ready the seat frame for a new base. 